Namaskar and welcome to India Science. Today we bring to you Science Times stories and in that we bring to you a kaleidoscope of significant scientific discoveries that took place last week. Snippets from the world of science, from the science behind ideal diets to the eruption of one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. We won't keep you waiting, so let's jump right in. Intrigued? Listen to this. Mount Etna, Europe's largest active volcano, is raging and how? It sprang back to life earlier this year and since then it has been erupting in a series of explosions. There has been no reported casualty so far according to reports. But what, friends, is an active volcano? Let me tell you more. And what makes Mount Etna so destructive? Now, Mount Etna is located in Sicily, an island in Italy, and it is known to be one of the most destructive volcanoes on Earth. In 1669, an explosion reportedly killed 20,000 people. A volcano is a rupture in the Earth's crust, the outermost layer deep within the Earth, where temperatures are so hot that it melts some rocks into thick flowing substance called magma. Eventually, some of the magma forces itself out through cracks on the Earth's surface, thereby erupting as lava. Mount Etna is active because it sits between the African and the Eurasian tectonic plates. According to an expert, Etna has unleashed a new paroxysmal eruptive episode from its southeast crater on the evening of January 18th, 2021, after four weeks of moderate activity. And now on to our next story, which is, what does science say about ideal diet? Low carb, keto, paleo, Atkins, the internet is a buzz with these diet fads, each promising to do wonders. But which one is more likely to work? The answer isn't that simple. But we'll try to unpack the science behind the ideal diet. Another deterrent to finding the ideal diet is that people respond differently to food. Some shed weight quickly while others struggle. Could we tailor diets perhaps according to a person's genes and gut microbes? We tell you in our video. Watch what you eat. You might have heard this statement from friends, relatives, diet gurus, media influencers and celebrities. Following a healthy diet can keep many diseases such as heart disease, diabetes and cancer at bay. The World Health Organization recommends a diet low on salt, sugar and saturated and industrially produced trans fats. Unhealthy diet, physical inactivity and genes could lead to obesity. Obesity increases the risk of several health conditions including COVID-19. The internet has emerged as a treasure trove for people aiming to shed a few kilos. It is believed that high-fat diet causes a greater intake of calories and high-carb ones lead to overeating. How much of this is true? To answer this question, researchers carried out a simple experiment. They put 10 volunteers on a low-fat and 10 others on a low-carb animal-based diet for two weeks. You must be familiar with the highly popular low-carb keto and Atkins diets. Volunteers in the low-fat group ate more carbohydrates and those in the low-carb group consumed more fats. After two weeks, both groups lost weight, but there were some differences. 1. The low-fat group consumed 550 to 700 fewer calories per day than their low-carb counterparts. Second, people eating low-fat meals lost more fat. Third, these individuals had higher insulin and blood glucose levels. So what are the takeaways of the study? 1. The study challenges the belief that a low-fat diet leads to more fat loss. Second, it also questions previous notions that suggest that a high-carb diet causes people to overeat. And third, low-carb animal-based meals did not lead to weight gain despite the higher fat content. The researchers studied only the short-term impacts of these diets. 
they are not sure if these results will hold up in the long term. The world may now have a vaccine for the novel coronavirus, but another invisible killer is still on the prowl. Here's a clue. The enemy is responsible for 1.6 million deaths each year. Yes, we are talking about air pollution. We already know that this is triggering several diseases and premature deaths. Now, here's something more worrying. Low air quality is targeting unborn babies. One of the reasons behind failed pregnancies, friends, is air pollution. According to a new study, it is responsible for roughly 3.5 lakh lost pregnancies every year in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Researchers look at an invisible component of air pollution, PM2.5 or particulate matter 2.5. These harmful microscopic particles are less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter and are pumped into air by farming, industrial activity, wood burning, stubble burning vehicles and burning fuels. As per the World Health Organization guidelines, the standard levels of PM2.4 in the atmosphere should be less than 10 micrograms per cubic meter and in India, it is 40 micrograms per cubic meter. PM2.5 particles are harmful because they can penetrate the deepest part of your lungs and damage them. And while they impact human beings, unborn babies face death risks. The survey indicates that over 34,197 women in South Asia have lost one pregnancy due to bad air. Think about it. About 77% of them are reportedly from India. This is alarming. And of this, 67% belong to rural areas that are often neglected. And coming on to our next story, friends, will this pandemic ever come to an end? This has crossed our minds at some point or another. But vaccines are seen as a means to put a lid on the raging pandemic. Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca shots are already in use. Now, two more vaccine makers have announced positive results from their phase three trials, providing us with more weapons in the arsenal against the novel coronavirus. Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 shot requires only one dose, unlike other vaccines. And another pharmaceutical giant, Novavax, has also brought some good news. Would these weapons act against the new variants? It's a question that we're asking. The new coronavirus is mutating. New versions of the novel coronavirus have been emerging from across the world. And the most worrying of them are there from the UK and South Africa. These developments have begged the question, could vaccines work against the various versions of the virus? Scientists are testing the current doses to find the answers. Recently, Johnson & Johnson and Novavax announced their shots could work against the currently circulating strains. Johnson & Johnson found a single dose of COVID-19 vaccine showed an overall efficacy of 66% in protecting against moderate to severe COVID-19. It was tested in 44,000 participants in the United States, Latin America and South Africa. It was 72% effective in the US, 57% in South Africa, where a fast spreading virus is circulating now. According to reports, the vaccine was 66% effective in Latin American countries, including Brazil, where other worrisome strains are now spreading. Novavax was 85% effective against the UK variant of the virus. However, this figure dropped to less than 50% against the South African strain. And with that, friends, this is a wrap on this edition of Science Time. Stay with us every Friday at 9 p.m. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar.